Hello, good evening everyone. Thanks again for visiting InfoSec Pat's channel. In today's lesson, we're going to be installing Windows 2012 inside of ESXi. So without further ado, let's get started. And before we get started, if you haven't already, just like, subscribe, and at the end of the video, please leave a comment. I would appreciate it. Thank you. So let's get started. So in today's lesson, we're going to be installing 2012 inside of ESXi 6.7. I installed this the other day in a video, and I showed you guys how to set that up, configure it. So this is the continuing video for that. So let's minimize this. We're going to go to my workstation. So you're going to see here, this is, this is the host that we set up, if you remember. And so let's go ahead and log into it. We're going to go to 192.168.200.210 because that is the ESXi host. We're going to log in. It may be already logged in. So I, it, you would be prompted for your username and password, and then you just log in. So you should see something like this. We're going to go to storage. And what would I want to do now really quick is upload the ISO file for Windows Server 2012. So let's go ahead and browse the state the data stores, the ISO images. I have 2019 in here, but what I want to do, I want to upload 2012 just to change things up a bit. I want to let that upload. This is going to take a few seconds. So probably I would say less than a minute, if I was to guess, to 4%. And we'll see how, how long it takes. But um, today is Black Friday. Hopefully everyone got some cool deals. I'm waiting for Cyber Monday, to be honest. But um, if you guys got some uh, cool deals today, awesome. Be grateful for that. And I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving yesterday with their friends, family, and loved ones. And that's always an awesome feeling when you around people that you love, you enjoy spending time with. I sure did spend time with my loved ones and it was an awesome feeling. It was with my girlfriend, her family, and I loved it. So it was great. So now let's just let that go through. It may take a little longer than I expected. I thought it was going to take maybe a minute or so. Um, so let's just give that a second. Okay. Perfect, that is done uploading. So let's get started. Now we have our 2012 machine there. So now we can close this. Let's go ahead and go to virtual machines. We're gonna create a new virtual machine. Create a new virtual machine here. Go to next. We're gonna name it Windows 2012 R2, how about that? Okay. So, compatibility, that is fine. Uh, the OS family is going to be Windows. The operating system is 2012, right there. So let's go ahead and hit Next. This is the data store that we're going to um, install it on. That should be fine. The hard drive, I want to put 25 gigs just to be safe. I'm just going to load it, install it. I'm probably going to end up deleting it after this video anyway. This is just the installation process. So you know what? I'll give it 30. Okay. So now with the CD-ROM drive, we're going to connect to a data store file. That's where we just put our image file into. So let's go ahead and browse to that. Go to ISOs and then our Windows 2012 R2. Okay. Hit next. And this is all the summary of the configuration for the VM. Hit finished. Okay. Now this is here. So we can click on this. We can power this bad boy up. It should load the files. Perfect. Now it's going to load the Windows 2012 image. Log it. Um, log the files or load the files. That's what I meant. Sorry. Load the files in here. And then we're going to go through the setup 
of uh, Windows 2012. Okay, so I'll give that a second to load, set up and starting, and then it should give us the prompt to install, you know, um, add the license agreement or you know agree to the license agreement and all that cool stuff. So we're gonna do. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to do standard for, for, for this demonstration. So we're going to do 2012 R2 standard. Hit next. And now this is the this is the hard drive that we just made that 30 gig space on our data store. Okay, hit next. And now this is going to load the files for the operating system. Once this is done loading, it's going to complete and it's going to reboot. So while that's doing its thing, I'm going to pause the video and then resume once this is done. So you don't have to look at me for that long, right? So okay, let's give that a second and I'll be back shortly. Now that finished, so now it's going to reboot. And once it reboots, then we can continue the installation. Okay, so we'll watch that reboot. And then we'll continue the configuration of Windows Server 2012. Release 2. So I hope everyone's having a beautiful day. I have to say, life is good, right? So let's give this a second, maybe a little more than a second. Usually it just takes a few minutes to when it reboots, if it has any installs to do, It'll do the Windows install and get all the updates configured and now it's getting now it's getting ready. So hopefully it's not too much longer. And once this is actually configured, what we'll do, we'll check the IP settings, check some network configuration, and I'll give you a brief uh, demonstration how this would be in the real world, right? So say when you install this on your virtual your hypervisor. Right? When you're sitting, when you're the network admin, a sysadmin guy, you're sitting at your desk, you're not going to be physically plugged in to your host right? to see this virtual machine. How are you going to remotely manage this? Right? You're going to either, you can go to the HTTP, to the IP address, but that's a little more of a hassle. right? A lot of sysadmins will set up our, as remote desktop. So we can request and the, the RDP protocol and we have to open up 3389 because that's a TCP port that runs on remote desktop, Microsoft remote desktop protocol, RDP. So we'll set up an IP address on this machine. We'll open up um, 3389 in order for us on the on our LAN side to remotely manage it so we don't have to be inside of VMware's um, ESXi. Okay, so now we can just make a cool password. I'll make it my fancy password for the administrator hit finished we'll let that finalize so yeah as I was saying so then when you're actually sitting down managing it you know we can remotely manage it from our desk so we don't have to go into the hypervisor and then remote or you know console into the actual desktop on the server we can remotely manage it from our um, right from our seats. So I'll, I'll show you how to set that up. Okay, so now that is finished. So now we can go ahead and log into our virtual machine, okay? So let's go to action. There it is. Uh, if I can get to it, control delete. Okay, so now we're gonna log in. Now this is gonna set up the operating system and your desktop. And now what we can do is check out what is our IP information. All right, so let's go ahead and give that a shot. And we're gonna look at our ethernet NIC zero. Okay, 192.168.200.254 is our DHCP server. And then our IP address is 200.200, .200. okay, perfect. All right, so technically if we go from my machine Let's see if we can ping that. We're not able to. Okay, that is fine. And I know the reason why. So let's fix that. So on my local, 
on my local IP, right, we have 192.168.50.200, right? So how does this know how to get outside of its network, right? If, if this is not on 200. Uh, 192.168.200.x, it has to have a gateway to get to that network. So let's go ahead and correct a few things and see if we can get this to work, okay? So let's go back here. So 192.168, okay. Let's just go, we can open up PowerShell. See, it doesn't have a gateway, so it doesn't know how to get off this network. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's just do this really quick, all, so we can see all the settings. And what we'll do is we'll disable IPv4 and we'll set this IP address up. Okay, and we'll, we'll, we'll use the same IP, which is 192.168.200. Dot 200 dot, or is it 200? Okay. What, oh my God. You can tell if you watch my videos, I'm not the best typer. <laughs> so, it's five, five. Now we can put the IP here is 192.168.200.2. I believe that's the IP um, for that for the gateway. So let's go to DNS dot one. Okay. Maybe it's dot one. Maybe I made it dot one. Okay. So one nine two dot one sixty eight dot two hundred dot two dot one. Okay. Let's hit okay here. Okay. Okay. Now let's see if we can ping dot 200. No, we're not. Okay, let's just give that a second to to um, configure. And let's just stop this. Minimize this. We can hit OK here. Let's actually go back and check our settings for our host. Because maybe um, I did this uh, a day or two ago, so maybe I just configured it differently than I thought, but that's why we can go triple check. Okay, so let's con configure the network management. Network adapters, that's fine, IPv4. So the gateway is dot two, so that's my mistake. So we have to go correct that. That's the way it's gonna get off this network. Okay, so let's escape out of there. Let's go ahead and look at DNS. Dot two. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and make some changes. We can X out of all this. X out. Let's go back to our virtual machine and look at the settings here. Dot two is our gateway. And we can just put this for for validation. Okay. Now Let's see if we can ping the host. 200.210. Okay, we can get to the host. Now let's see if we can get out. Let's see now if we can get from here to 200. Very strange. But it's not really a networking course in here. We just wanted to get this set up and and we're, oh, oh my God, this always gets me. I think it's the Windows firewall. Wah, wah, wah. I'm telling you, if you don't do this every day, you forget the little tinky details. Now let's see if we can ping this bad boy. And it's funny because I made a few videos and I make the same mistake. There we go firewalls always get me. So let's go ahead and cancel that. All right, so now we're all good here. So now we'll set up 
remote desktop. We'll enable remote desktop. So let's go ahead and hit remote settings here. We can allow remote set, uh, re, uh, remote connections to this computer. Administrator already has connection. So let's uh, apply that, hit OK. Now what we can do to make sure it's running, we can run the command netstat dash a. And let's see if 3389 is listening. 3389 is listening right here. You can We can see that right here, let's mark it. Boom. So technically, if I go from on my local host machine, and if I just write MSTSC, that's the remote desktop protocol, and I type in 192.168.200.200, if I hit enter here, we should be prompted to log in. I think I know a little bit. Okay, so let's go to administrator, if I can spell, and then my fancy little password, hit enter. Looks like we're gonna get it. So now we can hit yes here, and voila. I think we're remoted into this. So this is how you would set it up to remotely access it. Now I can do everything from here. I can X out of here. I can change the computer name. I can do everything that I want on this machine remotely instead of being on the hypervisor itself. So this is best practice and this is how you would do it. Obviously it's not 1 a.m. so maybe I can change the time on here. I'm in Eastern time. Uh, do, 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 Eastern. And it's not 4 a.m. It's 8.04 p.m. 8. Okay. Eastern. Okay. So now we have good time. And that's pretty much sums it up. So that's pretty much how you get your ESXi installed from the previous video and now this is how you would install an operating system on top of your hypervisor and then how to remotely manage it and that windows firewall gets me all the time i'm going to start disabling it from the beginning and maybe put a little note a little sticky right on the, my monitor because it always gets me for some reason like i said once you set up these windows operating systems and you allow the firewall or any applications it's set it and forget it so Usually, I forget it. Sorry, guys. But we got it working. We were able to remotely connect to it, manage it. And um, that's pretty much sums up the video. And I really appreciate you guys for, for watching. Thanks again. Please like, subscribe, comment. Reach out to me on social media if you have any questions and many more videos to come. I want to make this, uh, this little video series about installing high, uh, excuse me, not Hyper-V, uh, VMware works, VMware ESXi, install an operating system on top of there. Maybe we'll install another host and put it in a vCenter. So that's how, you know, the real meat and potatoes come along. So again, thanks for viewing. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I'll be checking you guys out in the next video. Thanks and have a wonderful evening, day, wherever you guys are. Cheers, man.